Um, is it appropriate for Facebook to work with the United States government to avoid the First Amendment, help the U.S. government avoid the First Amendment? Uh, Senator, we do think it is uh, sometimes appropriate to be in contact with government and with government organizations. To help them avoid the First Amendment? Senator, I'm not sure what what specifically you're referring to. Mm. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think it's appropriate to work with the United States government to target private individual speech that is constitutionally protected? Senator, I'm not aware of, of that. Mm. Well, let me, um, let me educate you. On July 16th, 2021, Facebook had an employee at Facebook wrote to the Department of Health and Human Services saying, and I quote, I know our teams met today to better understand the scope of what the White House expects from us on this information going forward. On July 23rd, 2021, a Facebook employee thanked HHS, quote, for taking the time to meet earlier today and wanted to make sure you saw the steps we just took this past week to adjust policies and what we are removing with respect to misinformation. This included, and I'm still quoting, increasing the strength of our demotions for COVID and vaccine-related content. On April 7, 2021, a Facebook employee thanked the CDC for responding to misinformation queries, and I quote, we'll get moving now to be able to remove all but that one claim as soon as the announcement and authorization happens. On July 28th, of this year, a Facebook employee reached out to CDC about, quote, doing a monthly misinfo debunking meeting. The CD responded, yes, we would love to do that. I'm sure they would. On July 20th, 2021, Clark Humphrey at the White House, who's digital director of the COVID-19 response team, emailed Dave Sumner at your company, among others, asking any way we can get this pulled down and cited a specific Instagram account Within 46 seconds, your company responded and said, yep, on it. That sounds like what in the law we call a pattern and practice of meeting, coordinating, and colluding with the United States government to target particular speech that no one in any of these emails alleges is incitement, which would not be constitutionally protected, no one in any of these emails alleges it directly encourages violence, which would not be constitutionally protected. So it appears to all be constitutionally protected speech on, I might add, very politically sensitive topics that Facebook is directly working with the U.S. government to target and remove. Is that your company policy to do this kind of thing? Senator, we were, we were quite public about our uh, cooperation with uh, health organizations during the unprecedented time of COVID. We knew that people expected and wanted accurate information on our platform. We had conversations with the CDC, with the World Health Organization, and with other public health organizations, not just in the U.S., but abroad, in order to understand how to help sure, make sure that folks weren't getting information that could cause imminent harm. Fair enough. So you're saying that this, this was, in fact, company policy to have these kinds of meetings with HHS, with the CDC, with the White House directly, that you did engage in, in this behavior, and you think that it was entirely fine. Is that your testimony? Senator, I do believe it's appropriate for companies like ours to be in consultation with public health organizations and with government. And, and you, you can confirm that things like taking down a private Instagram account and uh, adjusting your policies at the behest of, of the White House – uh, and putting into place misinformation policies at the behest of CDC, that, that those things you think are appropriate. This was company policy to do so. Is that fair to say? Senator, I'm not familiar with the Instagram account specifically that you're referencing, but we do know that people expected and hoped from the platforms that we would help them get accurate information about COVID during the unprecedented time, especially at the beginning. Well, isn't there a difference between you as a platform putting forward information and censoring your users at the behest of the White House, the administration more broadly, and the CDC? Isn't there a distinction there? We specifically... Uh, wanted to work with public health experts to understand the relationship between information and behavior. And so we did consult with the CDC, the World Health Organization, and others uh, to understand how the, the platform policies we built were affecting public health. Well, you didn't, just, you didn't just consult with them to understand how they affected public health. You actually 
censored on their behalf. I mean, you, t- you took these emails. I'm just quoting from a sample of them, which, by the way, have been disclosed in litigation. These, these emails show that you took censorship steps. You took down accounts. You planned misinformation policies. You adjusted your policies at the behest of the United States government. I mean, that, that's not just some theoretical thing. That's actually targeting your user's speech. But you're, you're, I appreciate your forthrightness, by the way. So, but you're saying that, that was, you think that's fine and that was your policy. Senator, we, we've been public about our policies on COVID misinformation specifically as well as on misinformation generally. And so you think there's not, you're not concerned about any of this? Nothing that I just read to you, you're not concerned about it at all? Respectfully, Senator, I think the balance of how to protect free expression as well as public safety is a difficult issue. But it's one we're committed to working with outside experts and publishing our work. Well, um, I I appreciate you being so forthright. As I said, this is actually from litigation between the state of Missouri and the state of Louisiana and the federal government. I I anticipate that your remarks under oath today are going to be very interesting and helpful to that litigation. I'll just say this. My view is, is that the United States government is bound by the First Amendment. They cannot encourage or coerce or incite or collude with a private party to get around the First Amendment, but you've just said to me today that that's basically what they did, that you coordinated with them repeatedly over a pattern of months and years to adjust and target your speech policies for protected speech at the behest of the United States government. I have to tell you, I've got a big problem with that, and I think all your users should too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.